Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Boost! <laughs> I'm YouTube famous now. Rhiannon rings like a bell through the night and won't you love to love her? I think not. <laughs> Available on iTunes in 2018, the retro remix, the 70s edition. <laughs> I think that's 70s. Rhiannon rings like a bell through the night and wouldn't you... Alright, so let's get right into this video. Last week, I posted on Instagram a picture, um, here I'll go out of it real quick, of me in Miami. I'm in Miami, bitch. So anyway, um, that's kind of like my Ernest Hemingway picture because every time I post it, people are like, oh my God, you look just like Ernest Hemingway. I'm like, that's such a flattering compliment. So anyway, um, I did this question and answer and I kind of was like waiting until I got enough questions on it. I'm loading them up right now. Um, and I have 104 questions on there. So I was like, I think it's the day to do the Q and A. I got my hair done today. What do y'all think? I got my hair cut. I got my hair did boost. So anyway, all right. So I'm just gonna go in here and randomly pick questions and uh, so you guys can find out, as if you don't already know everything there is to know about me, like and subscribe to my channel. <laughs> and hit the notifications bell so you get notified of all of my videos. And um, I also have three other channels. I have a story time channel uh, called Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little lessons I've learned. I also have a booktube channel and I have a daily vlog channel where I talk at length. So if you watch those channels, you probably know a lot about me already. But let's see what people wanna know that they don't already know, okay? Um, number one by Cray Cray Gray. How is your homeowners association life going? Has it gotten any better or are you just over it? Um, it's gotten much better actually. Um, it's funny because when you put things out there in the universe and you try to be a better person, I think that things come back to you. I mean, I think, you know, I think good harbors good and negativity harbors negativity. I've been trying to be a better neighbor, a nicer human being in the neighborhood. And um, yeah, so I've been getting along with the neighbors. I haven't had any complaints with the homeowners association. So it is what it is. And I got my new patio. So they built our new patio last year. I cannot wait until the summer to, I've been looking at patio furniture. We're like, we're going to have the patio of all patios, so I'm real excited about that. Um, but thank you for your question. And then uh, Cray Cray Gray also asks, how do you feel about the mall? Um, interesting fact, okay, I'm not a big shopper. Like, I kind of look at things, if you, if you watch my vlog, you saw I just posted on there that I got this Puma messenger bag. I'm kind of obsessed with watches, um, messenger bags and shoes. Those are like my three big things and cologne. And I kind of like watch and watch and watch until I go buy something. So I'm not like a person that goes into a mall and just like walks and shops. Now my husband loves to do that. And he loves like Saks and Urban Outfitters and all that kind of stuff. He loves, I'm, what's some of his other favorite stores? I can't think. Um, but he just, you know, like my husband loves clothes. He takes very good care of his clothes. I am more of like a vintage clothes shopper. My favorite store in the entire world is Broderpool Vintage. It is in Indianapolis. You go in there, it is like all of these like Western pearl button shirts from the 70s, vintage concert t-shirts. They have never not played The Doors live album, Los Angeles, and I love it. And I know the owners, and I've gone in there for years and years and years, ever since I was like a kid and it was in a different location. And um, it's just the coolest store. I love the vibe, I love the energy of it. And I'm definitely more of a thrift store shopper. So I'm not a mall person at all. I loathe going to the mall, so. Um, and I wasn't really a mall person in high school either. We would go, but I, I didn't like it. Um, let's see. Jenny1002 asks, what are your thoughts on the makeup community? Do you feel any of the YouTubers forgot where they came from? I do. And, you know, like, I love the makeup community. This is the thing that's hard. You know, like, people are like, you don't wear makeup, so how could you possibly know anything about it? But I sit back and I watch it all, right? And that is true. Like, I don't wear makeup, so I don't know a lot about it. But if you don't know my history and you haven't watched a lot of my videos, um, when I was in high school, my plan was that I was going to go into fashion design. And so, since I was 14 years old, I've read, like, all the fashion magazines. I still do, you know? And um, I'm always up to date on what's going on fashion-wise. And the beauty industry is kind of on the fringe of that. So, I very much do know what's going on with the beauty industry. And I kind of even play dumb sometimes in my videos because I'm joking and doing Jane and Vivian and things like that. Um, I love the makeup community. I think that makeup for men and women 
offers you know, an opportunity for make-believe and play up and making ourselves feel better. And what is wrong with that, you know? I have to say that, you know, I probably am not somebody that would wear full face of makeup just because I just can't, I don't have the time and the energy to be that finite with things. And I'm real impressed with the people that get up every day and put on a full face and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, it's just a lot of that I, I, would, I would imagine is exhausting. But when I hear the stories of people that have, you know, had cancer or they have gone through like horrible tragedies in their life or horrible times in their life and they get up and they just put makeup on and they walk around the house and they feel better about themselves, then I think that we are taking makeup and we're going past just a beauty product, you know? It is then an extension of our souls. And I think that any kind of make-believe is that. You know, from when we were five years old and we were dressing up and make-believing, it's makeup is very much similar to that. So I don't think negatively about it at all. The makeup community, I think, can be very ugly at times, where I don't think it has to. But I think the misconception is this. I think it's that, oh, you know, it's the makeup community. I think it's any community on YouTube, okay? I think that, like, whether it's the candle review community or the booktube community or the drama community or whatever it is, the gaming community, I think the mommy bloggers, I found out those mommy bloggers they fight. I didn't know that. And they come for each other and stuff. But, you know, I think whatever community it is, there's going to be some kind of infighting. When you're that close with somebody, it's like your mom has to separate you and say, okay, you guys need to spend some time apart. You've spent three days together. This summer is going to be long. Y'all are going to have some time. And I think that's it. Most of these beauty gurus have risen to the top very, very quickly that are very famous. Do I think that it's gone to their heads? I don't know that I think it's gone to their heads necessarily. I think there's a sense of entitlement that comes with it at this point where they're like, they just kind of expect some things. And, the, and I mean it like this, not that they expect PR, not that they expect the views or the subscribers or anything, but that this gig will be going on forever. I think the beauty gurus to really watch are the ones that are thinking five and 10 years down the road that are thinking like, you know, coming up with their own branding and where will this be? Where will I be? And it's not just about this. Does that make sense? Because I think that at the end of the day, then they're, they're business people that are very, very invested in the beauty industry. All right. Woo. That was long winded. Next question. Uh, Kristen E. Price said, what artist are you and Alex most looking forward to seeing at Ultra? <laughs> well, before we get into Ultra, I'm going to Ultra Music Festival at the end of March. We're going to be down in Miami for a long time. Um, if you don't watch my videos often, what, I've talked about this, but um, we are planning to partially move to South Florida. We're going to have a place there and keep a pl our place in Indiana. And um, I am really wanting to do some collabs while I'm down there. Hint, hint. So if there's any YouTubers in Miami that would like to collab with me, please let me know. Message me, whatever. Um, and uh, what am I, who am I excited to see? I'm excited to see Martin Garrix. I'm excited to, he's great every year. I'm excited to see Cascade. He, I don't think he was there last year, so I'm excited to see him this year. Um, David Guetta, Steve Angelo. Yeah, I mean, they're always good ones. There's all, the thing is, there's always two or three that I find that are new. Like, I think it was three years ago. Peepy, no, sir. Come here, you want to take an appearance in the video? He sees a squirrel out there. He says, I'm going to get him. I'm gonna get that squirrel. But you're more a lover. Give me a kiss. See, you're more a lover than a fighter. He says, I know, but I'm gonna get that squirrel anyway. Um, the thing is, is that when you go there into any music festival, there's always like up and you know coming like DJs that you don't know who they are or like that they're gonna be good or whatever. And like three years ago, I had a friend text me and he goes, Go see Marshmallow. Marshmallow's the one to see this year. And now Marshmallow's huge, you know? But back then nobody knew who he was. And I mean, literally and figuratively, but nobody, cause he wears this big marshmallow thing, you know, but nobody knew who he was. Like they hadn't really heard of him. And so Alex and I went and saw him on this small stage. He was incredible. And I was like, oh my God, this is like amazing, you know? So yeah, there's always new people and that's what's really exciting to me. The other thing is, is that we're very, because we own a website, Alex runs it. It's called rant.com. I'll, I'll link it below. And he interviews all of these electronic dance music uh, DJs. So we go to a lot of parties, a lot of pool parties and things like that. And uh, we get to like exclusively meet the DJs and you get to see them on a smaller level. And it's very cool. 
The week before Ultra is Winter Music Festival or Winter Music Conference in Miami. And so all the DJs are there. You know, all the producers are there. It's a really fun time to be in Miami. It's, you know, people from, you know, Japan and Belgium and Germany and the United States, LA, you know, all over the place, South America, Mexico. I mean, they're all over in one place for the love of music. And it is amazing. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. All right. Let's see. Next question. Uh, Kaylee Neville asked, would you be genuinely interested in getting into makeup? Maybe like wearing a little bit out on the daily or doing fun videos. I definitely would be interested in doing it to do fun videos. And I've really been thinking a lot about this lately. Like I kind of teased it out and I said, you know, like, what would you guys think about me doing makeup reviews? And people were like, no, we don't need to see that because you don't know what you're talking about. Right. And I understand that, but like, I think it would be fun. I think I would probably, if I did it, I think I would start like this way. I would do like uh, Jeffree Star's lip scrubs compared to like cheaper lip scrubs. Or I would do like cheap chapsticks compared to like uh, like high end chapsticks. Does that make sense? Things that seemed more natural to me. I would never be somebody that would put on a full face of makeup and go out. That's just not who I am. Um, but like, would I be entertain the idea of like doing makeup tutorials on here? Like following somebody else's? Yes, I think that would be fun. Would I love the idea of having somebody else do one on me? Yeah, I think that would be fun. I would love to do those kinds of things. But here's the thing. I will never do, a, you will never see a video on my channel that is not like authentic to who I am. Like I won't do it just because, oh, that's a view getting video. Like I don't really care about that. I want to do, I want to do videos that are fun for me to make and videos that I think you will enjoy watching. So, I mean, I'm not going to just do it because people are going to be like, oh, this old man's wearing makeup now. You know what I mean? Or guys wearing makeup get a lot of views. I just, I don't know enough about it. And quite frankly, at this point at 45, I'm more interested in learning about the industry of makeup and the business aspect of it than I am learning how to apply it on my own face. Um, but I am very intrigued with it. And, you know, most of my friends wear a lot of makeup and know the brands and all that kind of stuff. So when we're sitting at dinner and we're talking about, you know, like Tarte Cosmetics, they're like, how do you know this? And I'm like, I mean, what do you mean? How do I know about this? <laughs> Come on. Now. No, I don't act like that. I don't take a fan out in public with me. Um, I should, I should. So, but I don't. Um, yeah, but I'd be open to it. Okay. Um, Let's see. Some of these I've already answered. Sweet Yasmin said, what's your opinion about the paranormal? Do you believe in spirits? I most certainly believe in spirits. I just the other day did my um, serial killer story time. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. A lot of people were really spooked by it. Um, I had such a fun time doing that video. I want to do more story times like that. The thing is, is that my Peterisms channel is all story times now. So, um... You know, like, I, I put a lot of those over there. But if they're funny and they're kind of, like, longer like that, I'll probably put them on this channel. Um, but I most definitely believe in spirits, okay? And I've had a lot of encounters. And people have asked me to do a lot of paranormal stories. And um, I'm more than willing to do that on here. I think it would be kind of fun to talk about that. So, yeah, I do. Um, I believe in the paranormal. I do believe this. And I think this is something to put out there. Like, I think there is... Um, a lot of like, I believe a lot in negative and positive energy and not just in a paranormal sense, but like if you revolve yourself around people that are negative or, you know, gossipy or putting negativity out there in the world, you will in turn be negative. If you f surround yourself with people that are positive and uplifting and lift you up, you will more likely be positive. I have to be very, very careful of the people that I choose to be around, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, next question. Kinsey Chatterton said, how do you feel about missionaries going door to door? I, I, I don't know that I've ever had a missionary come to my door ever in my entire life. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of open to hearing what anybody has to say, you know, like, Hey, listen, sell me your gig. Let's see what you have to say, you know, but I've never seen one come to my door ever. Um, Mm, where do you, okay, Taylor Andrews, hey Taylor, said, where do you see your YouTube channel in a year? Um, so let's see, in a year I'll be 46 going on 47. Um, where do I see it in a year? I don't know. I do feel like there's a big change coming for this channel. So I've always had kind of feelings about things before they happen. And I feel like right now I'm kind of riding the calm before the storm, if that makes sense, in a positive way. I think that my channel is going to have some kind of huge cathartic change. And I don't know what that is. But I think it's going to be in a very positive way. 
I don't know if that's me kind of doing other things on this channel or telling other kinds of doing other kinds of videos or what that is. Um, but I do feel something changing on here. The other thing is that I am really, really loving my Peterisms channel. And I know this is like the third time I've talked about it, so I'll stop after this. But like that channel is growing and I love talking about it because I can just sit there and tell stories about my life and things I've learned. And it's fun for me because, you know, like I've learned so much about just in life by the mistakes that I've made and the things I've lived. So I have such a fun time on that channel. So I do think that channel will probably, I think that's the thing is that that channel and my vlog channel will probably grow a lot more in the year. I think that's what will happen with my channels. Um, <clears throat> okay. Cat Attack 25 said, your opinion about hunting, funny, I was talking about this on my video the other day. Um, I'm not a hunter. My dad was a hunter growing up. My friend Tanya was a hunter growing up. Um, I'm a vegetarian. Um, right now, I started it as a health issue. It changed over because I, I think it was Jenna Marbles said I couldn't eat my pets and it so resonated with me. I've never been somebody that could hunt. And I actually have a funny story about this. I'll tell, I'll do this in all in a story time on my other channel someday, but um, when I was a little kid, my dad got me, like, a BB gun. Like, you know, one of those Red Rider BB guns or something like that. We went out in the woods, and I had a cowboy hat on and everything. My dad's real masculine. We're very, very close. But he's, like, real tough guy, right? And so I'm, like, you know, eight or nine, and we're sitting there, and we're, like, doing all this kind of stuff. And he's like, okay, it's your turn and, to shoot the gun. And I go, Dad, can't I just be the cowgirl and you can be the cowboy? And he, like, to this day tells that story to, like, everybody, you know, especially uh, the first time I ever bring a boyfriend around. Now I have a husband I've had for 10 years, so he's heard the story 15 times, but. Um, okay, Courtney Riccio also asked about Ultra, and she said besides Cascade. Um, Milena asked, thoughts on astrology? Love you so much, love you too. Um, my thoughts on astrology, I don't know, sometimes on it, sometimes not. I'm more into psychics and mediums, honestly. Um, let's see. Let's see. Some of these people ask, some of you guys ask me a lot of questions. Um, Mm. Rebellious Barbie 18 has said, I need your opinion on having people in your life who don't necessarily agree with you with calling your trans friends by the preferred pronouns. I know I can't change a person's mind, but I want to try and open their mind. P.S. I love you in your videos. Okay. So I also have family members of mine um, that I wouldn't say are closed minded. They just don't understand it. And like when I refer to somebody and I say like she... Okay, you know, they'll say, I I'm confused. Like, he, like, they'll even be so disrespectful as to say, you know, he, she, or something like that. I'm like, no, it's she. And I don't even educate them anymore. I just say she. That's what my friends prefer to be called, or he, or whatever they choose to be called. It is what it is, okay? I'm not gonna fight somebody, it's their life. And, you know, like, if they're not going to understand it and they're not going to take the time to understand it, I, I have too many other things in my life to worry about than educating somebody's ignorance, okay? So I respect my friends and I call them the pronoun they choose to be called. That's what I do. I think that's what we all should do, right? Like, life's too short. I was saying this the other day in one of my vlogs, you know, like, one of the things I'll never understand... And I, I just don't get into the, a lot of the, like, religious discussion about, like, same-sex marriage and marriage equality and stuff like that because I think it's pointless. And that's really part of what led me to a YouTube was I had written a post for the, that got posted on – I written a blog that got posted on the Huffington Post called Dear Annie. I'll link it below if you want to check it out, too, about how the ban on same-sex marriage or marriage equality in Indiana would affect my husband and I. And what I've, I, I've said years over years is that I've never understood – people that at the end of their life looking back that their proudest moment would that be that they kept two people that loved each other apart legally I, I don't understand that like do you not have other things that you'd like to put your energy towards so if somebody is so intent on you know calling somebody a name that they choose not to be called it's really their ignorance it doesn't say anything about that person so I don't engage in that conversation I don't engage in ignorance period and it's taken me a long time to get to that part because, you know, I want to have the discussion and I want to fight and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, what advice would you give to a parent that suspects their son is gay? We want him to feel confident and comfortable with us. Okay, so um, the only thing I can share is my own experience. My dad came to me. Later, my dad told me that he knew since I was like four years old that I'd probably be gay. Um, which, because I had all the stereotypes, you know. But, uh, uh, 
you know, he came to me, he and my stepmom, they said, can we talk to you for a second? And I said, yeah. And he said, um, you know, we wanted to talk to you because, you know, we have seen you hanging out with this person or that person, blah, blah, blah. And we love you. And we want you to know that we would love you unconditionally, but we want you to feel that you can be whoever you want to be around us. And we wanted to ask you, do you, are you gay? Like, you know? And I said, I'm bisexual. And I told my mom the same thing, and my mom goes, oh, Peter. So anyway, um, I wasn't. And back then, we would say bisexual to get to the point of saying that we were gay and it being more comfortable. But, you know, I think them coming to me and having that conversation really made me feel comfortable. If not in that moment, down the road, um, it really opened it up for me, and it made me feel like, you know what, I can talk to them about anything. And um, they were very, very welcoming. My dad walked me down the aisle at my wedding, um, and I know my mom would have been there too. Uh, my stepmom has been incredibly supportive. And, um, you know, my husband talks to my dad and my stepmom sometimes more than I do. He'll be like, oh, I was texting your dad today. I was like, you were texting my dad today? Like, he texts. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's funny. Um, and Alex's family, I am just as close with them. And it's so amazing. And sometimes I take that for granted that I'm so blessed, not just as a same-sex couple, but just in life to have in-laws that we all get along with so well. Like, it's just such a cool thing, you know? Okay. Um, this is getting really long. Are you a conspiracy theorist a little bit? I watch Coast, I listen to Coast to Coast AM. Yes, I'm a conspiracy theorist. Um, oh my God, some of these are so, so serious. Um, my boyfriend is moving in. They're all like advice questions. My boyfriend is moving in soon. How do we coexist without getting on each other's nerves? Okay, so this is what's funny, right? So like when you move in with somebody, you think it's going to be the big stuff that will drive you crazy, but it's not. It's like the smaller stuff. Like you eat really loud or, okay, like this is my thing with Alex. So we have wood floors in our entire house, except for in our bathrooms, in our kitchen, we have slate floors. He walks so heavy and I'm always like, but it's stuff like that. The rest of it, like, we are totally fine, you know? And um, it's interesting because we live very, very well together. Alex believes it's because if you watch any of our Q&As together, that we are so similar. So we do everything very similar, you know? That, like, the way that we keep our clothes or the way that we get ready or the way that our bathroom is, everything is so similar that we don't ever really disagree with that, if that makes sense. It's not like, you know, I'm a clean freak and he's a slob. It's not like that at all. But there are going to be differences that you're going to have. And I think one of the things that happens over time is that the small things that drive you crazy about the other person end up kind of being the things that you love about them. And sometimes when couples break apart, they're the things that you miss the most, you know? Sometimes the things about, and this isn't, you know, obviously a romantic relationship, but some things I miss the most about my mom are the things that drove me the craziest. You know, like her calling me and being like, hey, how are you? And I'd be like, I'm fine, mom. I'm busy. Now I wish she would call me, you know? So... All right, this video is so long at this point. I'm gonna pick like one or two more questions. And um, how do you feel about getting older? Ask me, sketch log 138. Okay, so I talk about this a lot on here. I don't have an issue with getting older, like the aging part of it, the wrinkles, the gray hair. I really don't care about that, okay? I'm such a believer in aging authentically. But here's the thing. As you get older, you start to realize that some of the things that you wanted to do, you're running out of time, right? Like I was thinking about this as far as music festivals. You know, 10 years down the road, I'm going to be 45 or 55 going on 56. I don't know that I'm going to want to dance around at a music festival. I don't know that I'm not going to, but it scares me that I'm running out of time. You know what I mean? Like for the things that I want to do in life, you know, I don't know that at 55 or 60, I'm going to want to climb to the top of Machu Picchu or go snorkeling in Fiji. So it's like some of those things that I want to do, I've got to start figuring out like how to make it happen because time is running out. And, um, you know, one of the things that my mom always said to me was that we're on borrowed time. And basically what that means is none of us know how long we're going to be here. And, um, you know, with my mom, that was definitely a fact. She died at 64. And I mean, I thought she'd live to be at least 80, you know? So a lot of the things that she thought she would do later in her life that she was saving for never happened because she never made it there. So I'm not, I don't have an issue with getting older. I really don't. And in some ways I like being older. You kind of are like, you know enough to not give a shit. You know what I mean? But uh, the things I don't like about getting older are time running out. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on mystery channels? A girly hooligan asked. I didn't know what they were. I had to look them up. Um, Lorden Arts. I started following him about the Mount Baumeister case because he had talked about the Haunting of Fox Hollow Farms documentary. So I love mystery channels. I love them. I love them. I love them. Um... 
Hanaboo17 said, how did you not become a model? You're stunningly handsome. Oh my God, thank you so much. And then they said, you're giving Clark Gable a run. <laughs> well, Clark Gable is uh, six feet under. No, um, thank you so much. I wish I was a model. I'm short. I'm 5'10", 5'10 and a half. So, I mean, I, but I mean, I would have loved to have been a model. Who wouldn't, you know? I think that'd be fun. I'm not ruling it out. Maybe I'll be a model someday. Um... And I don't think you have to be, you know, super good looking to be a model. I think there are a lot of people out there that are models that have unique features. And I love that. I love that we, you know, embrace diversity in our physical characteristics in the world, you know, and that you can look different and you can be heavier and you can be, you know, older and all this kind of things and still get national, international campaigns. I think that is awesome. Like, I love that, that embracement of, uh, you know, embracement, embracing of diversity. Um... Let's see. Oh my lord. Okay. Which area do you think has the best fashion trends as left in this? Probably the 60s and the 70s, just because I love the 70s so much. Um, <laughs> okay, and then I'll, I'll end on this one. Ola, hey Ola! She's an old wolf pack. OG member. Uh, she said, if you ever got bored to be a daddy <laughs> AF, Silver Fox, thank you, Ola. What crazy color would you dye your hair? Love you. Um, and she put a blue heart. And that's funny because I actually think that if I was going to change my hair color and I was going to do something crazy, I probably would cut color it blue. Um, I had blue hair at a point in my high school career and I loved it. It was like a very light blue. It was really fun. I don't think that it's a mystery that it pulled my eye color out, and uh, which is why I wear blue. And um, so, you know, it was fun for me in high school, and I like that. I would also like to have pink hair at some time. I think that would be kind of fun, too. I did brown. You know, my hair started turning white when I was 23. And so I don't know that I would ever do brown again. Um, I liked myself with brown hair. I sometimes miss it. I, I miss having, you know, dark brown hair. Um, but it just was so much upkeep that I just was like, I actually was talking to my dad, and I said, because my dad has had white hair since he was my age. And I said, what do you think, Dad? Should I keep on coloring? And he goes, hell, just let it go. He goes, Pete, he was like, at some point you have to give up and you have to stop fighting the fight. He was like, okay, you're not 20 anymore. And I was like, you know what? Amen. And it's so funny because I can remember like one of the things, I, I love to swim in the summer and on vacations. But you know if you color your hair, like swimming pools and uh, chlorine and the, the salt water and the sun, they just pull the color right out of your hair, right? When I started that first summer after my hair color, I stopped coloring it, that I got into the pool with just like white hair. I was so happy. I was like, oh my God, I don't even have to think about that anymore. You know, it's all that superficial bullshit that I just let go of. And it was so freeing and liberating. And I was so happy to just let it go. So, um, you know, I think at some point you just have to, you, you, you have to come to the point where you just let go of some of that shit, you know? And you go, life is short. I'm going to enjoy my life to the fullest and spend it doing things I love with people that make me happy and with people that I love. And uh, I think that's really what life should be all about. I love you guys and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Bye.